Hi ho, it's book tubes day. This month I audibled the book I Am Not Myself These Days by Josh Kilmer Purcell at the raving of Tyler Oakley. Um, I purposefully didn't look up what it was about because I really wanted to read it to kind of get an, a look inside his brain and what makes him tick, why he loves this book so much. It was a major surprise when I started it and found out it was about a crack-addicted gay prostitute and his alcoholic drag queen lover. Not my usual reading material <laughs> at all. And quite honestly, it made me super uncomfortable at first. Um, but keywords there are at first. I got used to the content and I found that I was really much more interested in the emotional and psychological issues that are really universal rather than the actions and the, the real experience of these two guys and their underground sordid world in New York City. I had some trouble articulating, ex like putting into real sentences what I was feeling about this book. If you've read The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, there's a line in there that says, my thoughts are stars I cannot fathom into constellations. And that's kind of how I feel in very different context from um, The Fault in Our Stars, but I have a whole lot of thoughts about this book. I decided once I was kind of getting into it and I couldn't decide really how I was feeling, I decided to write it down to see if maybe I could make sense of my own musings once they were on paper. So I ended up writing down 17 thoughts throughout the way and I'm just going to tell you those thoughts verbatim as I wrote them down without alteration. So some of them are fragmented um, pieces of my mind and some are fully formed thoughts. And I think that is really telling because that's kind of how this book is. I think that's how people act. Sometimes we act in tiny spurts and sometimes we act with real determination. <laughs> Passing and reserving judgment. Which makes a person choose which option is relevant to which situation? Different variations of normal. Normal is not an absolute term. Every single human defines normal, at least internally, based on their own beliefs, morals, environment, prejudices, desires, and knowledge base. I am feeling a whole bunch of different feels. From uncomfortability, to disgust, to happiness, to anger, to curiosity, to wonder, and beyond. People go to truly extraordinary lengths not to feel alone. How much are people willing to move that invisible, this is where I draw the line, line? What pushes someone not just one step over that line, but to leap over that line? We are so small in the universe, and it is astounding how much we don't know about the worlds people live in outside of our own spheres. It is a seriously perverted ritual to not want to miss Blue's Clues while in a constant rage of drug addiction and alcoholism. Does the term lesser evil really mean anything? Is alcoholism really a lesser evil than drug addiction? Expanding drug repertoire, using drugs strategically, like a career skill as a resume booster. I keep thinking he's gonna die in one of these encounters, but he wrote this book, so. Mad at his significant other for trying to protect him from a crack addiction. That's messed up. How far is acceptable to be understanding with a loved one's problems when you have your own problems to deal with? What does destructive behavior say about us as people? Why do we believe that further screwing up our own lives will somehow push someone else to save themselves? Dispelling the idea that mourning means rebirth or a new beginning. It is merely another day. Self-deprecating cynicism is a shitty thing that exists. Right and wrong as myths. Right and wrong are ambiguous. Right and wrong are a purgatory of sorts. 
decided by each person given their environment and individual balance of brain chemicals. I like an open-ended conclusion because life is one giant open-ended story. Death is one giant open-ended story. We believe what we believe, but no one really knows what happens to our souls when we die. It brings a rather poignant equality to the whole of humanity. Those are my 17 thoughts. Am I weird? <laughs> did I get it? Have you read it? What did you think about it? If you want to read it, be aware. There's a lot of stuff in there that you might not be used to hearing. I think if you're in your 20s, it's an interesting book to read because it gives you a really different perspective on what your life might be like given someone else who's your same age and how they're living their life. The main message of this book is that you are not trapped in your own destructive lifestyle. If you want to change, you can change. Decide to be the master of your own mind and in turn your own life. Decide to do the difficult thing because in your own version of right and wrong, it's right. I do understand why Tyler loves this book and I don't think it's something that I'd read again, but I am really glad that I read it. Next month I'm going to read I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai and some other person who helped her ghostwrite, um, who is the teenage girl who was shot by the Taliban for speaking out. Um, for education for Pakistani women. I think she is one of the most inspiring figures today and I can't wait to get into this book. Hope y'all have a great week. Love yourself, love your pals, and hold on to your butts. See ya!